event at George's house is massive and the Christmas tree is the size of your living room. Really? So you had a nice time then? At first. What happened? We had a little row with him and Liam. I see. Oh, look, I shouldn't worry about it. Grown-ups often have little arguments like that. Doesn't mean they don't care about one another. Like you and Granny Bunch? Uh, sort of, yeah. So, um, why were they cross? Granddad George said he gave Dad some money to buy a shop, I think. But Dad didn't want it. I see. Now we can't go to Granddad George's house for Christmas anymore. Well, never mind. You can come to ours. And Grandma Deirdre and I will make sure you have a wonderful time. Josh, will you get a shift on you and be late for school? Honestly, he has been on goal slot. What the hell are you doing? I'm getting ready for my class. You all right? I'm fine. I'm preparing for my drama class. Oh, I thought you were having a turn. I'm warming up my face. What? Look, Usain Bolt doesn't just whip off his tracky bottoms to 100 metres, does he? He warms up the muscles he's going to use. And what's that got to do with acting? An actor's facial muscles are vital. They need loosening up so he can convey emotions. So how do these stars that have Botox get on? Cos happens some of them can only do three facial expressions and two of them are variations on surprised. Hmm, yeah. Well, these exercises are vital for any budding actor. Aye, if you want me in other films. Yeah. That's not an exercise, is it? No. Ah. <laughs> oh, morning, my friend. Oh, you'll find the uh, humble pie uh, on the middle shelf, second half, and the sour grapes from over there by the fruit and veg. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. I'm really trying to help. Oh, and if you're looking for your approach to the 12th, I've had a scout round and it didn't land here. You know, the hardest thing about winning is doing it with a bit of grace. Oh, no. No, the hardest thing about winning, in my experience, is knowing which one of your exclusive membership privileges to exercise first. It's talked about now else. Man, the VIP parking. Yeah. The members' locker room. Oh, yep. And la pièce de résistance. I hit it. I say, for all your kisses for me, I save all your kisses for me. I don't remember you being hit on the head with a golf ball yesterday, but I'm assuming you must have been. I am talking about the Brotherhood of Man, dude, and they penciled in for the members' Christmas function. I could try getting your ticket, but don't hold your... Oh, you could rip out my fingernails right now, whichever's easier. Ah, uh, listen, you don't fool me because you would love it. He would love it to be there with the movers and the shakers. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll put that down to their age. Listen, yesterday, you were lucky. It was a fluke, Alahan. Lightning will not strike twice. Well, we shall see about that. Uh, free for a rematch? Whenever you think you're man enough, yeah? Uh, I can manage on my own this afternoon. Oh, well. This afternoon it is, then. And don't you worry, I'll go easy, because it wouldn't do to humiliate a guest at my club. You all right? I'm after my baptism fire. It's green. Oh, you're going to be late for school. Do you need it now? Yeah, you know I have a meetings on Fridays. Oh, no, you don't, do you? Because it's only me. I'm sorry, so, but it's not going to work if you don't have your file for one week. Get baptised in a fortnight. You forgot, haven't you? Oh, I knew that was coming up soon, but, you know, there's just been that much on. Yeah, and when in it there? It just so happens that it's never about me. You know what, I feel like background noise in this house. I'm sorry, Soph, but I can't help it if your sister's Doing just... Doing exactly what she's always doing. And getting herself in a mess, and then you two come running, and then wonder why she never learns a lesson. Oh, and there's me, thinking you're big into forgiveness nowadays. Yeah, well, it's a good job, in it. Oh, and by the way, I've got my mocks coming up soon, so now I've told you, you can forget about that one. That used to be a struggle. Oh, yeah. Well, not anymore. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Hey, you should see me play Operation. I can whip out a funny bone faster than any man alive. I'm very proud of you. Well, it's only a game. You know what I mean. Simon mentioned that you had words with George. Yeah. Oh, he's got big ears, that lad. It was nothing. 
He offered to invest in the bar. Yeah, that's right. I turned him down. Oh, so relieved. He's the sort of man I think that money can open doors, forgive all sins, so I'm glad you've seen him for what he is. Whoa, whoa, no. Dad, I, I've done nothing of the sort. I like the bloke, you know, I like George. I just don't know him well enough to go into business with him, that's all. Or spend Christmas there. I mean, the presumption of the man to even invite you. He just wanted to see his grandson. <laughs> he wants another Christmas decoration, a small child to sit at the foot of his ridiculous Christmas tree. Hey, I told Simon you're coming to us. Fine. Um, where you should be, amongst family. Look, Dad, George is Simon's family, and he made me a very genuine, generous offer. OK? He certainly wasn't looking to score cheap popularity points, I know that. Excuse me. Yes, my mate. Yeah, I've got one. <laughs> We've been doing acting. Takes it out of you. I should look at actors in a whole new light. What have you been performing, Rocky Three? We were improvising. I played a wife whose husband was cheating on her with me. Anyway, we had to have a showdown, so we kind of threw ourselves into it. <laughs> I drew on some of my own experiences, and uh, it was quite therapeutic. <sighs> we're right, tear up. <laughs> She's got a decent right hook at this one. <laughs> you did this to each other. That's a Gideon. <sighs> Gideon? As class director, tried to break us up. A big Ooh. mistake. We broke his glasses, you know. <laughs> Well, so long as you had a good time. See you later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Work. Mm. All right, look. Everybody needs a hobby. I've got golf. You've got amateur dramatics. Ah, uh, not anymore. The group's folding. Lack of numbers. Sure they didn't just tell you that? No, it's true, actually. They've had to cancel a Christmas panto, Cinderella. Gideon's been in tears. And that'll be for I bit him. Bit him? Oh, he's fine. He'll forgive anything as long as it's true to the character. Mm -hmm. It's such a shame they're wrapping up. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Dev's giving me a lift, so if I'm going, I better get my clubs out of the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on then. Tee off. Before you say anything, I didn't mean any harm last night. I just got a bit carried away. <sighs> Come on, George. No, you weren't the only one. I'm sorry. It's, I was out of order. No, don't beat yourself up. I dropped all of this on you out of the blue. Started off by being a stranger. The next minute, I'm wading into your affairs. I can be a bit gung-ho from time to time. I mean, I proposed to the current Mrs. Wilson on our third date. Third date. Mind you, I never regretted it. She's lovely. You've both been really kind, and I know, George, you were only trying to help, and uh, I, I suppose I'm just not used to it, that's all. I just want what's best for that little lad, which obviously means what's best for you. I wanted to give you a leg up. I know, I realise that, I do, and I should have been grateful. Well, I was coming on a bit strong. I was pressurising you. <laughs> a lot of people are killed for that kind of pressure. I'm sorry, George, I overreacted. I hope we can just forget this and put it behind us, eh? Oh, yeah. Um, given what you've said, if you should ever reconsider these things, uh, my offer is still on the table. Yeah? And I've dreamt about parking in one of these spots. Mm -hmm. Fantasized. Thank you. You fantasize about parking spaces. I've read about this kind of thing, Dev, but I never dreamt for a minute that. Uh... Well, listen, this is more than just a parking space, my friend. This is just like a gateway to a whole new way of life. You get hit on the head by a golf ball yesterday. Life is suddenly very sweet. I'm rubbing shoulders with the elite, and I've got myself a gorgeous girlfriend who's lowered my stroke average for no end. I bet she has. She's a good coach, you know. Just wondering where the catch is. Well, there isn't one. 
The scent after Tara is just honesty all the way. There's no, no rattling skeletons and no dark secrets. Dev! Hey! You never said you were playing today. Good opportunity not, Matthew. Oh, hi, Dev. Mm, Matty, I didn't know you were a, a golfer. Yeah, I've just taken it up. That's my latest pupil. How do you two know each other? Oh, well, Matthew, he's the uh, manager of the cash and carry. I mean, never see him these days, though. You no, know, I'm more on the office side now. Well, listen, you got yourself a, a, a great teacher, but look, let me give you a tip. Now, you always, always keep your eye on the ball. Why? Because this one is spoken for. <laughs> Don't worry, so is Matt. He's just got engaged. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Nice one. Tough. Yeah, if he was as devoted to his game as he was his girlfriend, he'd make the next Ryder Cup. <laughs> Never stops talking about her. What's her name? Uh, look, I've only got an hour or so, so oh. can we... OK, let's crack on. Mm. I'll see you in the clubhouse, maybe. Uh, you can count on it. Mm. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, I could ask you the same question. I closed for lunch. Well, not that I had much choice with you absent without leave, did I? I needed some space. Well, you went to the traffic centre for some space. I don't have to explain myself to you. OK, fair enough. So, will me and Simon be having the pleasure of your company tonight? Don't know. I haven't heard the word sorry yet. Did I miss it by any chance? No, you didn't. Oh, leave that on. We're going out. No, I grabbed a butty at the Trafford Trust tent. me. There's more on the menu than a butty or a sorry. OK. My father, Christmas is my property. Why don't you call the police, then? Let me I off. I can hear whining, but it ain't sirens. You don't want the police sniffing. Look, you've made your point. Now, just give it his back, please. Uh, I've gone. Does that answer your question? We've still got to be careful. Why? Why can't we just get it over with? Every minute we tie his torture. Look, he's done nothing wrong. He was happy with him once. Yeah? Well, I didn't know what happiness was then. What are we waiting for? The sooner things are out in the open, the better, yeah? What? Look, I still want to do this. But? You're getting cold feet. I knew it. No. Look, we're going to be together. It's probably just take a bit longer than we thought. I'm begging you. That flashing Santa gives a lot of folk pleasure. It's my gift to the community. Well, what about the community's gift to you? Ten pound a throw for doing nout. Until you repay the people you ripped off, Father Christmas stays with us. And I wouldn't leave it too long, neither. Else you'll start receiving his circuitry through the post. Santa won't look so jolly with an ear missing, will he? You know, but animals. Animals. All right, all right, I'll give folk the money back. I haven't got time for games. Everything comes to them as weights. George! Hey. Hello. Nice to see you. What's going on? I was a bit hasty last night. Well, we both were. So we talked things through and I've decided to accept George's offer. You kidding? No. I hope not. This lad gets paid by the hour. You're not just saying this, are you? Because I went off on one. Are you serious? 100%. Ah! <laughs> Thank you! You won't regret this. So, if you could cast anyone around here as the fairy godmother, who would you choose? Oh, what does it matter? Panto's not happening. Mm. Well, just say it was. Say we were running it for a laugh. Well, it'd be early then, no danger. She's been fairy godmother to me enough times. Yes, I can see her in the role. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd and Steve as the ugly sisters. <laughs> You say my husband's ugly? No. I'm saying it wouldn't make a convincing woman, and that is the problem. As long as it is. <laughs> Ashley be the prince. Ashley? No disrespect, love, but you can't have Prince Charming stinking of awful. He doesn't. He has a shower every night when he gets in. But it's like 
scene from Psycho in it, round me up, look all like, <laughs> no. No, 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 there's only one Prince Charming round here, and that is my Stevie. <laughs> Steve? Don't you think he's a bit pasty faced? The Prince of Darkness, yes. It's non negotiable. Oh well. I'm a professional, I suppose I could play opposite him at a push. Who says you, for Cinderella? Stop banging on about those flaming lights. Our son's hell bent on marching Hello. up to his death. Oh, it's a flaming training weekend at Glencoast Barracks. I'm not going to Elmer. Oh, yeah. It'll be all assault courses and beers like and bonding, I'm sure. The will you and the before you know where you are, you'll be dodging bullets and some godforsaken. You're being hysterical, man. Oh, yeah. Just carry on being until you change your mind. You're be very determined, lad. Yeah, and so can I. If the prince handed you a glass slipper, you use it as an ashtray. Well, at least I could get my foot in it. You can't even get your ankles into a flaming punch ball, you. Hey. I am proud of my figure. Well, never mind Cinderella. You'd be better off playing a broom. Oh, yeah? Oh, hey! Hey! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, yeah. hey! Well, it's a good job off a man stepped in, cos I tell you what, you'd be the flaming broom, sweetheart. I've wiped the flaming oh, floor you. Oh, right. right. Oh, We're yeah. Going. Come on, then. Ashley, oh. put me down. Put me down. Go on, get rid, get rid. What are you playing at? Don't ask me, Ashley. How I ever thought I could be friends with a low life like her. She has not got a bit of class, not a scrap. Don't forget to have your shower later. Well, I don't suppose I need to ask what's going on. Hello, Ken. Well? All right, yeah, I've decided to go ahead with the bar. But once in your life you've shown a modicum of judgment. I knew it was too good to be true. Well, in my opinion, Peter's doing the right thing. It's a very good opportunity. Your opinion is of no interest to me. Hey, don't talk to George like that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, bow and scrape because he's got money. Or sell myself as cheaply as you did. I, I don't deserve that. You're as guilty as he is. I mean, neither of you care a jot about the consequences of this folly. What it means to my son and my grandson. This is about getting what you want at any price. You want to be careful getting worked up like that, a man of your age. If you just calm down for a second, I think you'll realise I'm trying to help. Trying to help yourself? My son dared to say no. Ah, oh, but you couldn't just leave it there, could you? One more push, another bundle of money, you had to beat him down. You don't know what you're talking about, Dad. Why don't you just go home? I'm going nowhere. Don't worry. I'm off for me dinner. I can only take a certain amount of hysteria on an empty stomach. Come walk you back, love. Thanks, George. You know, whatever you think, I love Peter and I love Simon as if he was my own. I wouldn't do anything to hurt him. Then I should do an awful lot of thinking and quickly. George, maybe I'll bring Simon over later. Perhaps he can stay over with you and Eve after all. That'll be terrific. I'll look forward to seeing you later on then. It took you so long, the flaming starving. It's me. Clean yourself up. I don't want to be back from noise any second. I hope he is. This strain is killing me. I want all the lying to be over, and I thought you did as well. Yes, I do. You don't know, do you? You don't. What's all this about waiting, putting things off? I can't see what's going on at our house. I can't just. Walk out on me family now. I know, I know that it's worse for you, but there's not going to be a good time to make a break. You can't just timetable these things. Yeah, yeah you can. What? When I do this, I, I want it to have the least effect on my kids as possible. Right. So, why is now any worse than any other time? Look, Sophie's got a GCSEs coming up. This could send it off the rails. Oh. Ruin a prospect. I can't run that risk. What are you telling me? I will leave Sally as soon as Sophie's finished her exams. When's that? I don't. July next year. I'm sorry. Let's get down to brass tacks. You've never liked George. My feelings about that man are irrelevant. Are they? You can't stand him. Not just because he's another grander, but because he blows you out of the water. He can give Simon things you could only dream of. Do you really think I'm measuring my relationship with Simon in terms of what I can buy? I don't think so. I know so. 
You're willing to dress up as Santa Claus in a shopping mall just so you can afford a flash present to keep up with George. Well, I won't deny it. Or that it makes me want to weep that it's the only way I can afford to get a decent present for my grandson. But that's not what this is about. Yes, it is. Just swallow your pride, Dad. Please, let George help me. Oh, if he truly wanted to help me, he wouldn't dream of funding this. He just wants to buy his way to Simon. And if that means handing you the means to destroy yourself, then so be it. He probably sees that as some sort of added bonus. No. You're just being ridiculous now. I mean, can't you get your head around it? George has actually got faith in me. Far more than you ever had. I have faith in you, but not behind a bar. Uh, I'm wasting my breath. You think what you like. Because I tell you what, it's going to make no odds. Oh, I will. I'm going to fight this project with all the strength I can muster. Don't you threaten me. It's pathetic. Anyway, shouldn't you be off yo-ho-hoing somewhere? Not be if you like, but I promise you this. For every bit of help that George gives you, I will give you ten times the hindrance. You will not open that bar. Go to itv.com slash Corey to watch an exclusive video with William Roach, who plays Ken Barlow. He's talking about his new job as Santa Claus and a preview of the trouble that's yet to come for him and George. Next, battling back from a brain tumour. Tonight's chats to Russell Watson.